Uh, so Max Nanus. So yeah. Uh, Max Nanus at the Scripps Research Institute is going to talk about Mark to Cure, Learn, Work, and Help. Hi, uh, I'm Max. Uh, I'm a computational biologist at the Scripps Research Institute in La Jolla. Uh, and I'm going to start off this talk by reminding you that nature is 147 years old. Science is 10 years younger, but they're still ancient, right? And the act of publication, the experience of reading the academic literature, really hasn't changed all that much. The, the PDF came out in 93, all right, I'll give them that, but the only real difference is that by the time I'm done this talk, there's gonna be 10 new articles on PubMed, and it doesn't matter how much coffee I drink, you're not gonna be able to keep up with that. You can't sit on top of a lecture. So, there is a heated discussion around free access of academic literature, but there's two, really one fact that we can always agree on, and it's that the title, and the abstract are always going to be made available. One of the tasks that we do is what's called named entity recognition. Um, we go from here and we have people highlight genes in green, diseases in blue, and treatments in red. We can have them do a lot more, but those three annotation types allow us to tell the narrative of where might a problem originate on a genetic level, how might that manifest itself as a disease? And what is a proposed action goal to treat that disease? As you can see, everybody has a disagreement on how to define um, those, those papers. And so we have to do a lot of community consensus to get an agreeable answer for what a gene disease or treatment is for a paper. Once we have that, we can do this other task called relationship extraction. To be able to do this, we first take the combinatorial concepts from that same paper and compare them to one another. And so the first step is to first ensure that concept A and concept B, our subject and our object, are what we intended them to be. If they are, we can then get people to start to refine that predicate, refine how are they related. If they can go into great detail to describe that relationship, great. If they can't, we'll still take any answer you give us. One of the really important aspects of this challenge, of this task, is that when you do this, these relationships and this knowledge that you extract need to be only based off facts that are in this paper. What's really interesting from this type of work that we get out of it is that when two of the same concepts appear in the same paper, how is that predicate heterogeneity uh, changed? Because if concepts are described differently uh, in regards to the relationship across papers, that discourse or that discord is interesting for us uh, from a research perspective. These two tasks that I just alluded to are the fundamental backbone of Mark to Cure Mark to Cure is, is a way to get non-scientists to read the biomedical, biomedical literature. Uh, we have our three goals, our three main aims are to get over that phobia, to get people to be comfortable reading science. Two is to try to take some of the knowledge that they extract from papers and then act on that in the wet lab. And three is this idea that if we had enough of these people to work, we'd be able to saturate and handle that fire hose from PubMed to be able to, in real time, annotate every article that goes online so that we'd have a computer to be able to understand where that article is about. Now, the real challenge with those three goals is the question of, can we do it with volunteers? And I would say yes. Um, we have data to show it, and I'm confident in our users' ability to do so, and they love it. As an academic, I usually have to spend the last slide to thank the NIH for the financial capability to be able to do our, our project in the end, but I want to really take this time to recognize the market curators. And I'm going to do that by showing some of the responses to the questions that we posted on before. Why do you mark to cure? When, when we look at these, you can see how important it is for our users to contribute. Um, I think it's a disgrace that you, you need a PhD to read the biomedical literature. It should be accessible to everyone. I think it's insane that you need to run a 5K in order to help, right? And, and so with mark to cure, if you can read, you can help. Thank you.